Hey guys, welcome back to the Basement Workshop. I have posted two parts so far of the Vintage Black and White Beginner's Restoration Series. Part three is in the can, so to speak. But now fate has intervened. I just got home with a new acquisition, which is right behind me. Now when I proposed this series, several of you expressed interest in my talking about electrostatic sets. Well, it just so happens that, coincidentally, I now have what looks to be a pretty darn, all-complete, pretty pristine Admiral 7-inch electrostatic TV. A classic Admiral 19A1. So, I figure I should take advantage of the situation and also talk about these sets and restore it. However, I'm not quite sure if I should jump back and forth constantly between the two or branch off and do two separate series. So, this video, two things. One, how do you all want me to handle this? Separate series or compare and contrast as we do both at the same time? I don't want to confuse folks. Uh, I was originally just going to focus on the magnetic set and I uh, was not expecting this to pop up. But uh, it looks to be a really nice example. I've done this set before. I'm very familiar with it, just like I am with the other Admiral. And I figure, hey, they're from the same year and uh, same manufacturer and all that. So I thought it'd be kind of interesting to compare and contrast. So. Let me know what y'all think. Should I include it at all? Separate series or go back and forth, maybe in the same video and compare and contrast circuits. The other thing is a big box right in front of me that I have not looked inside of yet. We're going to go through it together. And if anybody knows what this shirt is, bonus points for you. All right, a little background first. This came uh, by way of the Antique Radio Club of Illinois. I donated some stuff, and I got this box. If you've been watching my videos, you may recall I recently did a video on decade resistors, decade capacitors, Cornell, Dublier. I donated all those to the Radio Club, and I got this box. I was, I, I was tipped off as to what in it. It's in it. It's TV tubes. Typically, the radio club weeds out all the TV tubes and nobody wants them, so they end up coming my way. And oh yeah, we got some fun ones here. A 10JY6, a 13EY7, an 11HM7, I don't know what any of those are. A uh, 9AU7, I'll have to do a little um, researching. 9BR7, 10DE7, those are used in the 21 inch predictors. 19T8, uh, it's used in some FM radios. Uh, so, yeah, let's, let's, let's dig into these. Let's see, we've got an assortment of shoe boxes and whatnot here. So, Q5. I just assume when if it's something that I don't recognize, it seems a little exotic, it's from a newer set, like an 11HM7 or a 10JY6. Some of them I know from earlier incarnations, like a, a 6DR7 I'm familiar with, but I've never seen a 13DR7. Um, 10GN8, 10DX8, kind of. So what happened is, for years and years and years, TV, most TV filaments were 600 milliamps. So series strung sets were typically either all 600 milliamp tubes or two strings of 300 milliamps. Later, when you get to the 60s, they came out with cool, cool chassis, uh, was Philco's term for it. They had 450 milliamp CRT filaments. A little bit more... Uh, energy conscious, lower power TV, so they introduced 400 milliamp, 450 milliamp series strung tubes. They also started combining more functions in tubes so they have two or three elements. They weren't compactrons though. 
I think that's where most of these come into play. I imagine some are also from the last rows of radios. Uh, these look a little bit more familiar to me. 6CL6, 6CB6 TVIF tubes. Got a bunch of them. Don't think I have any sets right now that use them, but that's where I've seen them. 6CL8, I gotta look up. 6CL6, I gotta look up. 6CM7, I think that's a dual vertical TV tube. A little fuzzy. 6BQ7, you see those in tuners. 6AG5, same deal. 6BZ6, 6BY6, man, there's a lot of those. That I gotta look up. And a nice cigar box. Antonio E. Cleopatra, Tony, yeah. Anthony Cleopatra. <laughs> a little slow today. On my fourth cup of coffee. Ah, uh, another cigar box. Chicago Motor Cigars. 6AF4, those would be new HF tuners, 5X8 tuner tube, 6HE5 uh, tuner and IF. In fact, that's 7 inch Admiral probably uses some of these or 6AU6s. For sure, the other Admiral, the magnetic deflection set, uses some 6AG5s. 6 cn 7 These are like late 50s, early 60s TV tubes. Some 12s, 12BE6, 12BR7, 12BL6, and so on, and so on, and so on. I believe these are all 7 and 9 pin tubes. I'm going to keep digging through them. I can see it's more and more and more the same. I don't want to bore you guys to death with me saying 6CL6 six and 6CU8 six, <laughs> six over and over and over again. So let me keep digging, and if I find any oddballs, interesting, noteworthy things, I'll let you know. For example, that. Now and then you'll find tubes that just have four digits on them. Uh, two possibilities. One, they're industrial tubes, ruggedized tubes, or they are otherwise higher quality, like audiophile type tubes. But generally these are, it could just be a 6AU6 or 6AL5, but these are uh, for extended operation. Like if they're going to be on a repeater at the top of a tower or something like that, they're more ruggedly built, more precisely made to last a lot longer. I think the, uh, the really primo audiophile ones start with sevens, typically. <laughs> While I'm talking to you guys, I could hear our big dog upstairs. Sounded like he was up to no good. Oh yeah. Nearby I have another stash of tubes and he took off with one of them. He found a very nice new old stock RCA Radiotron 5V4 and decided to eat the box. <laughs> At least the tube seems to be okay. Uh, but there he goes again. They do not like it when I talk to you guys. They get bored. They get uh, jealous sometimes. For sure I will have uses for these. A few of these I recognize from projects I just did where I was digging like a 6AH6 or I was <laughs> hunting around for these because I didn't have any handy. So this will definitely uh, help replenish my stocks. 12BA6, 12BE6. 6CR6, CQ, 6CQ8. Boy, I do not recognize these at all. It's funny how many variations there are of tubes. A lot of these are just going to be remote cutoff pentodes. Uh, IF tubes. They just, over the years, they just made some very slight minor tweaks to them. That's why a lot of these are interchangeable, with just slight differences. A little bit different biasing, a little bit different gain, a little bit different internal capacitance. I thought I had two I thought I knew tubes pretty well. I, I I'm a little mystified at how many of these I do not recognize. And they're the old style boxes, the old meatball logos and all that. How come I don't know what a 6KE8 is? 
<laughs> There's these JH6. I gotta look these up. Maybe these are used more in test equipment or more in communications gear or something like that. Ah, yeah, there's something a little bit different. Ah, uh -huh. looks like a regular two box, does it not? Except it says New Vista on it. It's a 6 CW4. Should be a little itty bitty tube in here. Big old box. Last throws of tubes when they're trying to compete with transistors. They use these in tuners primarily, VHF, UHF tuners. A few other niche applications, test equipment. I think there might have been a few tape recorders that use them. Some specialized gear. Oh, and oscilloscopes. Front ends, Tektronics used them for a while. Before uh, semiconductors completely took it over. I don't have anything that uses them. HJV8. I do recall I had a series strong Admiral TV that used one of those. So yeah, I'm I'm guessing if these are TV tubes, we're talking 60s, which I don't work with too much. Oh, we do have a few optimals thrown in the mix. Ah, MR. Oh, come on, brain. What does MR mean? Oh, I think this had something to do with the war, World War II, that these were meant for replacements or something like that, because they, they halted consumer production, and they marked some tubes as being, I think, okay for the public to use or something like that. I'm probably getting all that very wrong, but the MR means something along those lines. Cunningham 6... CS7, I think that Admiral 30, uh, 30C1 we're about to embark on, or are starting to embark on, uses one of these for audio first stage. Twelve DS7, twelve DZ6, twelve DB5. Don't recognize any of them. Now, now we're at the level where they're just all loosey goosey, just tossed in here. It's going to be a little, <laughs> a little tedious to dig through these. They probably were in these originally, but they've all fallen out. Oh, uh, looks like these were nicely organized at some point, where they had numbers on the side. Are you kidding? They're eight volt tubes, but or something like that. Mostly falling out now. It's fun to see the boxes too, like this is an Amperex, 12B4, but notice it has a label that somebody wrote and put on there, you know what that means, there's a good chance somebody reused the box and that's not what's in here, or maybe it is, you never know until you look, nope, it's a Sylvania, yeah, so, don't get too excited when you see a two box, you gotta look inside, uh, it's very common for boxes to have been reused, See, lots of these have been. People were thrifty that back then. And often, all what you also see is when they put a new tube in the set, they take the old tube out and put it in the box. So you think you have new old stock tubes, and you do not. You have used up tubes. Twelve FX five, twelve HG seven. What is this? Neat. Totally generic, just says electronic tube, but it has nifty graphics. We have an early 50s looking TV on it, and looks like a 50s big light radio. Handwritten. Imagine somebody made those just for a reproduction market. Well, that's weird. Originally, this had a Hong Kong semiconductor in it, but somebody's 6J6. Yeah, I guess a tube would just fit in there. Yep, it's got a 6J6 in it, all right. <laughs> see if any of there's a few Amperex boxes in here. Let's see if any of these actually have Amperex. Amperex, a North American Philips company, they made some pretty nice tubes. 
Yes, this is really an Amperex. No Bugle Boy in it, though. That's what uh, the audio crowd wants. They have a little tube playing a trumpet on them. Those are uh, premium grade tubes. Slovenias are pretty good too. Uh, personally, I like the RCAs with the uh, the old style logo versus the newer RCAs. This is a classic. They made really good tubes. Tongue soles are pretty good. Sylvanias are really good. Uh, GE, not so much. I've heard some bad things about Raytheon. Motorola, not sure. I've heard Westinghouse aren't so hot. But certainly the kind of no name or weird looking ones towards the end of the tube production run, those are not generally very good tubes. The standard brand, I'm guessing maybe not the greatest. What you get into towards the end of tubes is they were, uh, the market was rapidly shrinking and they were just catering to the replacement crowd, so they were, the quality was dropping off. As you can imagine, it's a nice looking early Sylvania 6J6. I don't know if the earlier tubes are really better, say a 40s tube versus a 50s tube versus a 60s tube. But I, I like the box better <laughs> of the 40s tubes. And a nice old Sylvania. You know, like standard brand, uh, I don't think standard brand is, is uh, exactly high quality. That's a weird looking one. So it's that electronic tube generic looking box again, but it has RCA stamped on the end. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not that well versed in tube lore. Hey, we got one compactor on. 6BA11, super common. I hope I'm keeping this in frame as I go through this. Hey, some good old damper tubes, 12 AX4. What's this? 12 AX4, I'm guessing. Barely we Yep, 12 AX4. Got a million of them, but uh, it is a pretty common handy to have damper tube. 3A3 high voltage rectifier. There are some octals mixed in here. But they are TV related. BF11, I don't know. Another new Vista. 6DS4. They didn't make too many different types of them. Well, it was just more and more of the same. I will be shocked if there are any 6 or 12 volt miniature TV tubes that I do not have in my stock anymore. These will be put to very good use. Thank you, Antique Radio Club of Illinois. Now, we're not done yet because two more boxes arrived today. So let's pop these open. Now, this one, I know what this is. The other box, not so much. This was a spur-of-the-moment thing. I uh, recently fixed up a uh, predictive TV for someone, and we got to talking about how to feed a signal into it. And I do have a, a pending series coming up. I held off for a few reasons. Well, you got to talking or asking me about well, if I could recommend an HDMI to NTSC converter. And I have had some in the past, but I've seen this one talked about a lot lately. Super cheap, available on Amazon. This is interesting. I do have a couple other HDMI to composite converters, and you need an RF modulator after that. This goes straight from HDMI to RF. I don't know why this exists. I don't know why somebody is manufacturing this. I don't know what kind of market there could possibly be for it. I've seen this talked about a little bit online with very much mixed opinions from it just doesn't work to you really have to experiment because the manual is terrible. I can already see it has a weird connector on it. I'm not even sure what the heck goes into that. 
So I have zero expectations of this. But I can tell you it has HDMI in and then RF out. I think it do PAL, NTSC. It has a remote control. It has a power pack. It has a USB cable. Oh, uh, never mind. Actually, I, I think some of you have pointed this out to me. I think this is a European type of connector, so I may need to rig up some kind of adapter. This is not, uh, in the U.S., we would use an F connector for this. Uh, this is a little bit diff different. I did buy a whole bunch of adapters lately, though, so maybe I have what I need. Anyways, I want to do a shootout where I'm going to review a whole bunch of products. It's going to be a, a series on how to feed a signal to an old TV. Now, the box underneath it, I am very puzzled about. I recently picked up an R's, sorry, a Hewlett Packard 8662A RF generator. I've been slowly restoring it. And as an aid to it, I have been buying some manuals. There are folks selling very inexpensively manuals, but I haven't seen one that's complete. There are various owner's manuals, service manuals, and the appendixes, and came in a binder, and I, I bought several sections. Well, I just bought another section, or a couple sections, out of the service manual for, I don't know, five bucks or something like that. This is a huge box. This is a very heavy box. So I'm not sure what exactly is in here. Uh, oh, okay. These are beefier than I thought. Uh, the manuals I purchased, this is, this is the whole deal. This is everything. The other manual I bought, I think, was just the owner's or a quick start guide or something like that. It was more like a little magazine pamphlet something. Yeah, wow, this, this is phenomenal. I've been working off the PDF for this. This, this is everything. Nice fold-out diagram, and this looks pretty darn pristine other than... <laughs> maybe I just did that too. <laughs> I was opening it in my haste. But this this is cool. This is the real binder and everything. I guess this is what I bought. I, I didn't realize... From the photos that were posted, I didn't think I was getting all this. Wow. This is awesome. So, do I have... Oh, it is two volumes. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> this, <laughs> you don't watch my videos on this, this is, uh, for its time, it was a phenomenal RF, synthesized RF sleep generator, not sleep generator, uh, or sorry, yeah, it does sleep, it does AM, FM, and, uh, all kinds of amazing things, markers, uh, huge frequency range, 10 kilohertz to 1.2 gig, uh, so these are all the manuals, and I, I, I have... I've more or less got it working, but I still have some issues. So this, yeah, man, I've been working on low-quality scans of this. This is all the schematics, parts locators, parts lists. Uh, anything that's possibly wrong with this, anything that could possibly need servicing, I have everything covered. And boy, these, these look pristine. This, this was a score. I think I paid seven bucks or something like these for these. Oh. So this is from 1982. Wow. Alrighty. I will be getting back to this. I will be getting back to this. The Christmas crunch has been on. I have been burning the candles at both ends and in the middle to get sets out and ready for people. Somebody's showing up with a van this weekend to uh, take away a bunch of TVs. And that's why I've been holding off on doing the uh, the review series and uh, series on making up my own home transmitter and stuff. Is because the, once these, all these sets are out of here, I'm going to have a lot more room to work with. And I can spread everything out and really do some experimenting. So that will be coming up. Uh, so that's going to be it for now. Hope you enjoyed this unboxing, and let me know what you think about the Admiral Electrostatic set. Just do a normal restoration on it, in a separate series. Bounce back and forth and compare and contrast with the uh, magnetically deflected Admiral set, the console set. Or sort of interleave the two... Um, or sorry, sorry, or, or make an in-depth series standalone on electrostatic sets. So, all right.